Games folder, app switcher. Close, activate, default, see eternal. See eternal, home, back button. See eternal, shows, in the enchanted underwater city of glass, what will you sacrifice for immortality? Love, the sea eternal is an epic interactive fantasy novel, pilot, the whales have grant, will you, bullet, bullet, shoot, bullet, 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 you can purchase, buy it now for $8. Play, text field, play now for free, button. You stretch your arms and flip text field, think you can do, zero, think you can do better? Fruit, think you can do better? Zero, image. Whole. Voodoo, heading levels, image. And degrees one. Arcade. Open, button. Close interstitial add, button. Home, back button. See it, show stats. But you stretch your arms and flip your tail as you notice a school of pilot fish following behind you. You smile and bank upward into a loop with a big acrobatic twirl of a finish. The feeling of the open sea pushing past you brings a delicious rush. You check your followers. The school tries to recreate your moves, but the individual fish all just end up bumping into each other. Silly scavengers. You pull at your woven bag, trying not to lose focus. Tomorrow is the celebration of eternity, a ceremony thanking the whales for their gracious gift to the merfolk, the eternity orb. Given that Tefra is still trying to rescue Sedia from Sinza, the ceremony has also morphed into a possibly over-optimistic welcome home party for Tefra. Whatever happens, everyone's still expected to bring a contribution as they would normally. So you're out here in the wild, looking for yours. First, catch some of the pilot fish, radio button, checked, one of five, search the nearby reefs, radio button. First, catch some of the pilot fish, search, press farther out into the open ocean, radio button. Check the surface, radio button. Return to the city empty-handed, radio button. Un next, button. Pilot fish are delicious, and their scales make for the most beautiful decorations. Plus, they're easy to catch. You kick off and press your arms against your body, twirling in tighter and tighter loops. The school emulates the motion, condensing their formation into an almost solid mass. Suddenly, you reverse your direction and open your bag wide, pulling it into the mass of fish, closing it once you're sure that you've caught at least one. The school of scavengers regroups and then swims off to find a new target to follow. Their movements reveal nothing, no anger, betrayal, or grief. Do they even understand the idea of such emotions? Is there swimming? You stare at your bags. Preparing for the celebration of eternity while the eternity orb is still missing just feels so pointless. Taffer's been gone for almost a month at this point, and you can't be the only one with serious doubts about whether she'll make it back in time. Or at all. She shouldn't have been picked to recover the orb. It should have been you. You know that human world better than anyone else. Now Taffer might be dead or captured, the orb. You stare at your bags. I couldn't have known. Radio button. Checked. One of four. I might get picked as a replacement. Radio button. Unchecked. Two of four. I should be preparing for a search party instead of a party party. Radio button. If I had been picked, I might have failed anyway. Radio button. Un next. But if I, if I, I should be preparing for a search. If I had been picked, I might. I should. I might get picked as a replacement. I might get picked. I should. If next. Text field. Next. Button. Next. You look around you. Usually, being out in the ocean feels centering, but with everything going on, it's much more difficult to just enjoy being out here. You push yourself to refocus on your task. First, catch some of the pilot fish. Dimmed. Radio button. Un search the nearby reefs. Radio button. Check. Checked. Press. Check the. Return with my catch. Next. Button. Next. Your mind can't stop turning it over. Why did Sinza steal the orb in the first place? If something happens to it, the. Your mind can't stop turning it over. Why did Sinza steal the orb in the first place? If something happens to it, the immortality of all merfolk will be lost. Which must have been her plan, since she ran away with it on land. You'd think with an artifact so important, the council would have sent more people, not just a single volunteer. It was an inevitable failure. Your breath catches. Was the inevitable failure intentional? That thought darkens you. You might lose your immortality at any moment. How can you even deal with something like that? I should be preparing to take Tefra's place instead of moping. Radio button. Checked. One of four. Ch I'm out in the wild trying to get my mind off of things. Radio button. I'm just thankful for how long I've lived. Radio. There's no shame in accepting the inevitable. Radio button. Unch. Next. Button. Next. Return with my catch. Radio button. Unch. Check. The press farther out into. Search the nearby. First. Catch some of the pilot fish. Dimmed. Radio button. Search. Press farther out. Search the nearby reefs. Dimmed. Radio. Press farther out into the open ocean. Radio button. Check. Check this. Return with my catch. Radio. Next. Button. You lose yourself in the emptiness, allowing yourself the dangerous luxury of losing sight of visible landmarks. You imagine what it must be like to be an open ocean fish, completely independent of any cities or landmarks or locations. Wandering through the ocean, falling asleep while adrift and then waking up somewhere new, but not even noticing that you're somewhere new, because what difference does any single location make in the giant, open ocean? You shudder at the thought, and search in all directions. From the edges of visibility, a giant manta ray glides down toward you, smiling with that permanent goofy grin. You indulge it and circle back. You notice three more attached to it. Remora are not only edible but also have soccer discs that can be used as invaluable tools. You gently steal one for yourself and carefully place it in your bag. Your search feels progressively more hollow. If you've only got days or hours or however long of immortality left, should you really be spending them on shores? Wouldn't it be better? Forget this. Lose myself in the ocean. Radio button. Check. Do not lose sight of the long term. I don't want to be alone. Return. Next. Button. I don't want to be alone. Return to my friends instead. I don't. Do not lose sight of the long term. Just what? Do not lose sight of the long term. Forget this. Lose myself in the ocean. Forget this. Do not. I don't. Next. Button. You drop your bags, which kick up a cloud of sand as they hit the seafloor below. The bags wriggle with their contents, but they hold fast. They were made to hold. You push into it through the cold water as fast as you can. The water drags against you, enveloping you, but you push against it harder still. You fully immerse yourself in the embrace of the wide expanse, closing your eyes, enjoying the silence of being so incredibly alone. You breathe heavily from a fresh ocean current. There is no feeling more exhilarating. 
It's some time before you go back to retrieve your bags and head toward the city. You clasp your bags tightly shut and let them trail behind as you speed back to the city. It will be nice to drop off your supplies for someone else to deal with. They'll probably be happy to help you, considering the difficult journey everyone knows you'll have picking up Tefra's quest. You do your best now, then you'll hear your name. Alusian. Radio button. Check. Algua. Boani. Ra Dawson. Radio button. Unch. Check. Lyria. Mariana. Molokai. Niamis. Radio button. Rusalkia. Thalmar. Something else. R next. Button. As you push off to meet them, you start to feel a bone-deep reverberation, sonar. It's whale song, and you curse the timing. The song will most likely have an important message, but one you can only hear if you stop to properly listen. Stop and listen. The other merfolk will catch up with me. Radio button. Checked. One of two. Rush to meet Esther and Araya. Radio button. Next. Button. You slacken your body and concentrate on the vibrations of the deep sea noise. Squid. They are attacking us. They are fighting back. Our minds hurt. We call upon your help. Ever warned. Esther does a quick scan of the area while Araya speaks. I'm so glad we found you, she says. It's about Tefra. She takes a moment to catch her breath, although it feels like there's some additional hesitation in there as well. She returned. Radio button. Checked. One of four. She failed. Oh no. Why don't you just tell me? Radio button. Un next. Button. Araya bobs her head yes and no, her long blue hair wisping up and around her face. She pushes the mess back. Actually, yeah, she did return, even brought back the Eternity Orb. The mission was a success. She saved us all. Her hair floats into her face again, forcing her to pull it all back and keep it in place with her fist. Esther pulls out a small strip of shark leather and starts pulling at Araya's hair. And on top of that, she brought back Sinza, he says. He braids the rest of Araya's hair and ties it off. Sinza she's being held as a prisoner. I was starting to worry she might have failed. Radio button. Checked. One of four. Ch is Sinza in danger of retaliation? Orange. What was the rush to meet me? The whales mentioned something. R next. Button. Esther lowers his eyes. Nobody wants to admit it, but I think we all were worried that she might have failed, he says. I mean, what if that really was the end? Mortal. Just think. Araya pulls at a strand of hair that Esther missed. And just because of one person going crazy like that? She says. I think there may be some changes. She sighs out a long stream of water. Maybe even the kind that go too far. Esther avoids eye contact. We came here specifically to get you, he says. He flips around and grabs Araya's hand, motioning for you to follow as he starts to swim back to the depths. Araya looks back to check that you're following. Taffer brought back more than the orb, she says, more than Sinza. She brought back, she trails off, focusing on the path straight ahead. Esther finishes for her, a human. Really? Ha! Huh. That paragon of self-control Tafra must be fallen for a human, brought it back. And now Esther and Araya are here because, well, you did pretty much the same thing. And that kind of makes you the resident expert on integrating humans. I'll do anything to help. Radio button. Why did Tafra bring back a human? Radio button. Unchecked. Two of four. Maybe we should introduce the humans to each other. How has the human been? Sick. Next. Button. Araya shoots back coldly. I guess she just wanted a souvenir to the trip. This new human must be going through the same process. Tefra shouldn't have brought it down, says her. This new Tefra sh Esther clicks in disapproval. Araya shoots back coldly. I show stats, but Araya shoots back coldly. I guess she just w Esther clicks in disapproval. Now, don't say that. You're talking about the person. As the three of you swim farther down slowly, the light from up above fades. Tefra shouldn't have brought it down, says Araya. Humans don't belong here. Their bodies, their minds can't take it, and it's not fair to them. This new human must be going through the same process that you know happens to humans who are around merfolk down here. Their bodies fill with salt water and strengthen against the crushing cold, but getting used to the sensations takes a while. After a time, the merfolk's immortality even rubs off on them, and they stop aging. Esther wriggles uncomfortably. This new human, it chose to come down here itself, knowing it would have to stay, he says. Do you really think it shouldn't be allowed to control something like that in its own life? That decision can't be made with a full understanding of the consequences. Radio button. Checked. Humans should be allowed to make their own decisions, even if they are mistakes. Radio button. Un let's- well, hopefully that's it. Let's give the human a chance to get used to things. Well, hopefully that's a decision that makes it happy. Radio button. The human made the decision, and it's not for us to question its judgment. Radio button. Uncheck. Next. Button. Araya lashes her tail harder. It's about making informed decisions, she says. Humans just don't have full agency if they choose to stay down here. They certainly don't have any if they choose to leave. Esther pushes himself hard to catch up. Dawson's own human came to enjoy things here, eventually, he says, then looks at you apologetically. You know, even if the two of you didn't end up lasting. You glide deeper still as the sandy seafloor turns to bubbly smooth rocks, pale lavas that indicate you're close to the rift where the city is located. You think you can see the gleam of the city in the distance, but it may just be another mere person coming or leaving. Araya slows her pace. I guess giving them the option to return if they want is really the only solution that makes sense, she says. I'm going to push for that, I promise. I doubt the council's going to change their minds on that, Esther says. It's tied up in whale politics. I say we do our best to be welcoming, to make this place as pleasant as we can. Yeah, forget autonomy, Araya huffs. We'll build up the cage instead. If that human wants to leave, we should let it. Radio button. Checked. One of six. Living here is pretty amazing. Here's hoping the human likes it too. That human made its own decision. We respect it.
Radio, the rules are clear. No human is allowed to return, and there are good reasons for it. You know, that human wouldn't even be here if the council had sent me instead. So what do you know about this human? I don't- Next, button. Array pauses to look back at you. I'm glad you agree, at least, she says. Maybe that can help sway the council. Maybe it's soon enough that we can make up some kind of story about it all being just a bad dream. Either way, the human's here now, and it deserves to enjoy life here, Esther says. You're the expert on this, we need your help. You reach the edge of the rift, and the conversation dies down. You don't go down into the spreading seafloor below, but instead travel along the edge of the small cliff to find a guideline to the city suspended over the rift. Slowly, from out of the depths comes into view the pulsing glow from the crystalline city. Home. Into the city of glass, button. As you approach the crystalline caves, you notice a faint glow, a dull reflection from the merfolk within. The city is constructed. As you approach the crystalline caves, you notice a faint glow, a dull reflection from the merfolk within. The city is constructed from giant interlocking blocks of shaped crystals, stacked in a seemingly haphazard pattern to form passageways, gathering caverns, and smaller shelters as needed. The city itself rests on a platform suspended over a geological rift, anchored on either side with dark crystal chains and balanced with gas ballasts arranged in the top portion of vaulted domes. Maintaining the balance is your job, although adjustments are rarely called for. The lights from within bounce around more chaotically than usual, and as you get close, Arrayer and Esther purposefully avoid the celebrating merfolk as they lead you through the passageways to Tefra's carved out dwelling. Arrayer pauses outside, clearly hesitant to enter. Esther shifts against the current. The lights from within bounce around more chaotically, Array, you consider. It would be nice to have someone else to help you with answers, but so many merfolk at once might be overwhelming for the human. I'd appreciate your company. Radio button. I think fewer people would eat better. Radio button. Next, button. I think fewer people would eat better. I think fewer... Next, button. Esther casually turns and looks at you over his shoulder. No problem, he says. We'll go check on the Eternity Orb. It'll be nice seeing it safe and sound back in its chamber. Araya seems a bit more concerned. I guess you'll be fine, she says. Just do everything you can to support that human. I'm worried Tefra's getting all the attention and her human will just get lost in the shuffle. She waves it off. Never mind. I'm sure you'll do just fine. The two of them link arms and wave goodbye. You notice Esther pull her eye closer, into a reassuring hug. They've been together for much longer than any single human life. It's going to be difficult for Tefra if she's hoping for anything like that from the human she brought back. Your own romance didn't even last one human lifetime. Not even close. You still have regrets. Radio button. Checked. W that's just what happens with humans. Radio button. Tefra's relationship probably will end just as poorly. Radio button. Unch. That's just what happens with humans. That's just what Tef Although it Next. Button. Next. That human is still wearing all his surface clothing. A form-fitting brown suit. That human is still wearing all his surface clothing. A form-fitting brown suit, white shirt, and dark shoes, all waterlogged. Each item is either sticking to him or floating around him at odd angles. His somewhat shorter hair is still long enough to float over his face. You notice that while he has some small objects tucked into the pockets of his clothing, he has no bags or anything to keep him occupied. You don't even think he had a light source before you came in. He's positioned himself vertically, so you do as well. And where is Tefra? Did she really leave this guy by himself? You move out of the doorway to help disperse the light, and he smiles at your approach. You take the opportunity to give him your own name. He plays with it out loud, Dawson Dawson. It's beautiful. He, tell me about yourself. What's your, how are you doing? Can I get you anything? Radio button, uh, where is Tefra? Why were you alone? Radio button, unch, how did you get here? Why did you come here? R next, button, how, how did you get here? Where is Tefra? Why were you alone? Where is... How... Next, button. Next. He tilts his head. If you don't mind, I do have one question, he says. About Tefra. He pauses, pretending to be absorbed in adjusting his buoyancy. I want to know, I'm not just some toy to her, right? She doesn't bring humans back all the time. It's true that Tefra's never brought... He tilts... It's true that Tefra's never brought back a human before, but then again, she's never had a chance to. And she was selected specifically because the council didn't think she'd get stuck in all that landlocked stuff. Then you realize that he might be asking if he's the other man intruding on a merfolk relationship. Tefra is not an impulsive sort. I'm sure you must be even very special for it. There's only one other human. You're the expert on this situation. Next, button. Flynn gives a relieved sigh, an exhale of water that's almost natural. So she wasn't lying when she called me special, he says. In fact, there's only one other human here. He does his best to resume a neutral expression. Oh, it's cute, really, how much of a rush he's in. The impatience of the mortal. It'll be soon, you reassure him. It shouldn't be difficult to arrange. You notice that the poor man's body has been slowly floating upward as he's been talking to you, and tell me about yourself. What, how are you doing? Can I get you anything? Radio button, unchecked, two of five. Where, how did you get here? Do you have other questions? Next, button. Do you have other questions for me? Next, button. Next. Immerse yourself. It'll come faster. Radio button, unchecked. F worry, find something to distract your- You might lose a few layers. Flynn holds up a chunk of glowing coral. I actually wouldn't mind being phosphorescent myself, he says. This glowing coral doesn't quite do the job. You smile, both from relief and- You might lose a few layers. Clothing tends to be unnecessarily restrictive. Radio button, checked. One of- f Find something to distract your mind. Radio button. Uh, worry more about going too fast. Radio button. Immerse yourself. It'll come faster. Radio button. Unchecked. Four of four. Checked. Next. Button. Flynn chuckles. Immerse myself. He says. I think the technical term is flooding. Seemed appropriate at the moment, doesn't it? You humor him with a smile. That was my plan, but I didn't realize just how sick I'd end up feeling here. He continues. It takes some getting used to. I think once I'm over that, I won't be leaving any of you alone. 
He jabs his fingers, pretending to demand answers to the hard questions. Who are you? What species is that? Flynn grabs onto the anchoring pole even tighter, shimmying his body down toward the floor. Tell me about yourself. What's your... How are you doing? Where is Tefra? Why were... How did you get here? Why did you come here? Ch do you have other questions for me? Next, button. Flynn preemptively laughs, then tells the joke. Well, I swam here. Yes, that is indeed how he got his follow-up laugh, though, breaks down. I suppose the story is actually fairly simple. R that doesn't explain why you left your world behind forever. Radio button, unchecked, two of four. The chance. Did you come here just to be with Tefra? Next, button. Flynn smiles meekly. A chance at immortality, he says. He hedges a bit. I suppose what really drew me here was the way Tefra described the place as being so full of magic. That's always been a fantasy of mine. You shift uncomfortably. The question is just sitting there. R do you wish you could go back? Radio button, checked, one of four. Ch do you regret coming here? Well, I guess I'm glad you're here. Radio button, change topics. R next, button. Next. Do you have other questions for me? How do- where- how are- tell me about- Flynn seems to have gained some confidence. He first loosens his grip on the anchoring pole, then releases it entirely, swimming out to the center of the home to face you. His arms tread against the water, and his leg widened and kept slowly to maintain his exact position. It's certainly a more graceful look. Maybe he's getting used to this whole thing faster than you thought. Tell me, how are you doing? Can I tell me about yourself? Next, but- do you- next, button. Next. Something else. Right in, radio button, un- both, actually, neither, really. I prefer fee- I prefer male. You nod politely as he opens and closes his mouth in false starts several times before committing to the words. There's something I want to ask you before we chat some more. I prefer- I prefer female. Neither, really. Radio button, unchecked, three of- Both, something else. It's not your concern. Next, button. Flynn shrugs casually. A gender makes sense to me, he says. I, the poor thing, button. Flynn edges against the corner, the poor thing, button. You finish with the most important information, the limits of the breathing spell. You must always stay within the city, or be accompanied by merfolk, you tell Flynn. If you ever leave our protective aura, the ocean will crush you. Or drown you. Or both. Flynn blanches. Nobody told me that, he says. I could have died. He presses his head into his hands and is silent for a while. After some time, he speaks softly and deliberately, I love Tefra. Very much. He pauses. But that's kind of scary. Dying if I don't have a chaperone? And nobody told me? I need to know, am I welcome here? He look, we will all do our best to make you feel welcome. Radio, I know that I will help you out however I can. Radio, but I can't lie. It may be difficult for you. Radio button, uncheck. Some people will always be mean, but don't let them stop you from doing what you want. Radio button, uncheck. Next, button. Some people will always be mean, some people. Next, button. Thanks, says Flynn. And you're right. I shouldn't waver now. Flynn turns to you. One final question, he says. Would you be so good as to show me the sights tomorrow? I'd love to. Radio button, sure thing, if you would like. Ra let me make sure that works first. Radio button, uncheck. I'll see what I can do. Radio, next, button. Suddenly Tafra bursts in, alone. You stiffen at her sudden arrival, but your stress morphs into pity as you see her poor state, sallow skin, flaking scales, even her blue hair is tangled. She doesn't look like the warrior you know her to be. Or at least, she looks like a warrior preparing for a different battle as she narrows her eyes at you. Dawson, she says, introducing herself to Flynn, I see. She defensively sidles up against him. I know what you're thinking, because everyone else is thinking it too. But I thought that you, of all people, wouldn't be judging me. That maybe you'd understand. You feel a twinge of guilt. You did make the same judgment against her. A little bit. Of course there's nothing wrong with falling for a human. Apologize, sorry. You're right. You you feel a twinge of guilt. Apologize, sorry. You're right. I do understand. Radio button, checked, one of four. Deny, I'm sorry that's happening. But I only came to meet him. Radio button, unchecked, accuse, hurts to be on the other side. Dodge, anyway, I was just leaving. Radio button, accuse, accuse, hurts to, deny, I'm sorry that's happening. But I only came to meet him. Dodge, and, accuse, do, next, button. Tefra pushes aside the hair that's floating into her face, giving you full view of the exhaustion, the pain, behind her half-smile. Thank you, she says. I saw you here, and you just looked so self-righteous. She shakes her head. It's been a long day, and you're maybe the only one who can understand what I'm going through. Flynn contorts his throat, doing his best to suppress a tea cough as he reaches out to comfort Tefra. Tefra turns around to Flynn's encouraging, if somewhat sickly, grin, and grabs him up. She presses his bony frame against her chest, as though she believes that the more surface contact she can create between them, the better she'll feel. It's raw and awkward to watch, and you move to leave. Almost as an afterthought, she addresses you one last time, I'd like to decompress, if you don't mind. You almost can't oblige her fast enough, and even as you swim down the corridors, the experience starts to fade into the surreal. Now you're just alone, button. You search around for your human ex, to discuss Flynn, but your search yields nothing. Not at the ballasts, not at the library, not anywhere else you might expect to find a wandering human. I'm worried about him, radio button. I'm worried about her, radio, I'm worried about other pronoun, next, button. I'm, I'm worried about her, radio button, unchecked, two. I'm, next, button. Maybe she just doesn't want to be found right now. Will you know where to be found, your mind starts to drift through possibilities on how best to occupy your time. Perhaps do some light reading in the library? Maybe see if you can go find a shark frenzy to watch? Or maybe just relax and just scrub your skin clean? 
You, then, with a flat, you could take the time to appreciate what was saved by checking on the eternity orb, by checking on sins in the ballasts. You probably have enough time to do one or two things before you should get some sleep. I still have supplies. They should probably be dropped off. Radio button, checked, one of six. Ch check on the eternity orb. Check on Sinza. The Why not celebrate? Radio button. Unchecked. Clear my mind by doing some work. Radio button. Go home and get some sleep. I've done. Next. Button. You followed the passageways toward the center of the city, the council hall, a giant room not hollowed out from crystal like most of the rooms in the city, but rather created from the negative space of the carefully fitted crystal surrounding it. Even the room's giant and elaborately carved arches and columns are just illusions, decorative pieces sticking off from the neighboring rooms. It's amazing that it's all aligned so perfectly, but then, it helps that the original architects have worked on this design since its conception. The only thing you don't like about this room is how the walls were designed to absorb light, which keeps the room from getting too bright when it's fully occupied by phosphorescent merfolk but makes the space feel empty and dark when you're there by yourself. You notice a mare person at the end of the room and hurry along to meet them. As you get closer, you're surprised to find Council Leader Ector organizing supplies. Even doing such a mundane task, though, you can see the efficiency, the dedication, the- Almost surprised to see anyone here after Taffer returned, Ector says. They don't even look up, making their vo You pause. Why is Ector here when the Eternity Orb has so re- Hey there! Why are you here? Radio button, check, drop off my bag and be on my way, radio button, unchecked, two of two. Check, next, text field, next, button. You have your bags and dump the contents out. Ictar glances between your contribution and the other bag stuffed with fish, crustaceans, seaweeds, and spices. I see you went with a symbolic contribution this year. They say with an amused smile. Oh, I'm just teasing, don't mind me. I know you must have been considering yourself Teffer's replacement. And you probably would have been had she not returned when she did. Next, button. Then you feel the vibration of the whale song once again. You brace yourself and listen to the sonar message. Clear. The threat has been neutralized. Merfolk may return. No further merfolk need assist. Well, that's good to hear. You hope that Esther and Arai are okay. The burden of defending seems like it's been hitting Arai hard lately, and even Esther's starting to show cracks in his usually pleasant exterior. Iktar puts a hand on your shoulder. I really do appreciate you bringing this in, and all the work that you do for us, they say. You're important. As important as those ever wardens out there. They smile. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you at the celebration tomorrow. For now, have fun with everyone else. Or get some, you turn to leave. Yeah, maybe you're right, you say. I'll be off now. I still have supplies. They should probably be dropped off. Dimmed. Check on the Eternity Orb. Just check on Sinza, the Orb Thief. Why not celebrate? Radio button. Clear my mind by doing some work. R go home and try to sleep early. Tomorrow. Check. Next. Button. Next. Sleep until tomorrow. Button. Tomorrow will be exciting enough, and it's never a good idea for a Sleep until tomorrow. B sleep until tomorrow. Liao crackles with unbound nerves as Liao. A small change in the current wakes you. Currents of change. Image. Show stats. But currents of change. A small change in the current wakes you up. As you stutter into consciousness, the current takes on a rhythmic pattern that you slowly recognize as breathing. Once you've figured that out, you recognize the subtle irregularities as Liu. You lie still a moment longer, it's been several days since you've seen her last, and now she's coming to see you. You can feel her approach hesitate. She must be trying not to wake you. That's sweet. You grab her attention by breathing in deeply, slowly opening your eyes, and then unhooking yourself from an anchoring pole. Liao stops and waits patiently, and you take the opportunity to look her over. Liao, ask about not being allowed into the air ballasts, radio button. Ask about Sinza, radio button, unchecked. Ask what's really bothering her, radio button, next, button. Ask, ask what's really bothering her, ra Ask about Sinza, radio button, unchecked. Ask, next, button. Next. Dub, next, button, text field, next, what's really bothering you? Radio, talk, ask, ask about not being, I came looking for you. Radio button, check, she retreats back into a corner, where it's easy for her to brace herself and stay steady while talking to you. Back when you two were together, that's the place she used to settle all the time. I came looking for you. Radio button. Ask about not being allowed into the air ballasts. Radio button. Unchecked. Two. I came. She retreats back into a. As soon as you start to ask, show stats. Match three. Candy. Zero C. Nine seven. Next. What's real? Next. Button. Liao pushes against her temple with her hands. I have so few comforts left in my life. I just need some air. The tremble in her voice. She's not allowed to surface, not even far away from land. What if she were to see a passing ship and reveal her presence? Better not to worry about it. And sure, maybe we can talk the council into returning access. Radio button. Checked. Maybe we can leverage that into them letting you surface. Radio button, unchecked, two of four, there's still the air in that wreck. We could go, maybe we can leverage that into the- There, I say we go anyway. Radio, next, button. Liao gives a sharp laugh. Push the, next, button. Liao clenches a fist. You're right, she says. I, we will push back. We won't let the whales steal this from you, it's hard to affect change. The whales, fucking whales. Radio button, unchecked, four of four. Next, fucking whales. Radio button, unchecked. Next, button. Liao laughs raucously. I know, right? They're big enough to eat you in a single bite, but they still demand that a bunch of tiny creatures serve as their personal protection. Maybe if I eat she tips her hand toward you. I have to say, though, I feel like the past you would have. She pauses, starting her neck. It is possible, but you answer only one part. I sure hope they're not going to try and kill her. Radio button, checked. Check, answer only one part. Play it off, I think. Deny knowledge. Admit knowledge. Turn it back on. Next, button. Liao twitches nervously. There's something else that I really need to know about. After you start to lose steam, Liu interrupts. Is he as Flynn White? She points, Flynn was definitely white. It didn't seem significant at the time. Liao narrows her eyes at your lap. I can guarantee you this. I won't let him mistreat you. 
Radio button. Me, the council, Esther, Aurelia, even Tefra. We will all keep him in check. Radio, I can guarantee you this. I won't, I can guarantee me. You're the only other, you know, you're in. He seemed more, next, button. I'm glad to know that you'd protect me, says Liu. You do your best to stick to your shirt. Liu pushes her hands against her. T Maybe Liu's starting to really. Maybe Liu's just desk. Maybe Liu's just next button. It feels somewhat strange, but nice for Liu to be confiding in you once again. You didn't realize just how much you have missed it. You just smile pleasantly, trying not to let your. Well, it's something that's been bothering me for a while. Your heart sinks. It's true. If that's not a situation that would have allowed her to return, I'm sorry. You would have been the right choice. R I'm sorry. You should have gone with Tefra or me. Radio button unchecked. Two of four. I'm sorry. I think getting next button. Li rubs her eyes. Li stretches. Anyway, sounds great. Radio button checked. One of four. Li stretches. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, I could really use a chance to get some air in my lungs. Why don't we pick up this flint guy? Sound actually, maybe it should just be the two of us. How about we go to the surface instead? Why don't I fight to get you access back to the air ballast? In next button. Why? Why? How? How? Actually, maybe it should just be the two of us. Actually, checked. How? What? Next. Next button. Liu smiles insistently. Maybe some other time, she says. Right now, after not being considered for the mission, after getting part from the air ballasts, after nobody taking the time to tell me the news, I could really use a small piece of my life where I make, of course, you say, today can be about you. Introduce the humans, button. Introduce the humans, button. You and Liu, arm in arm, start the swim through the frosted crystal caves. Each piece of crystal was grown from volcanic hotspot. You easily navigate through the passageways, up, left, right, straight. It would be confusing if you hadn't navigated every path hundreds of thousands. You look at Liu. Even though you're so much faster and stronger than her, she still kicks her legs while swimming in an effort to help push herself along. You're always a little uncertain if slowing to match her. Does this feel familiar? Ra so I hope this isn't awkward. Radio. I've always wondered, should I slow down or pull you along faster? Radio button. Unchecked. Three of... It's nice to get to spend time with you. Radio button. Un Silence is better than awkward small talk. Let's just get there. Radio button. Uh, next. Button. Liu chuckles. Is that why you swim so awkwardly sometimes? She says. You remove the anti-drifting catch from the door and enter. Taffer looks up at your arrival and gives a weak smile. Her scales are still dull, and her face still sunken. Flynn looks decidedly more pale than before, and he's lost various parts of his clothing, his socks and jacket, as well as other accent pieces that you're less familiar with. His shoes still sit uselessly on the floor, and you suspect that by now some sea creatures have claimed them for homes. Flynn looks a bit shocked when he sees Liu and they exchange the expected pleasantries. Tefra pushes forward toward you. Hey there, Dawson, would you mind taking them out? She gives a weak smile, gesturing to her body. The celebration is still happening later today, and I'd like to be in a better state. She drifts closer and whispers, I've heard the whales aren't happy about the situation. I'd like to get the whales aren't happy? No surprise, they rarely are. They're always acting like you owe them everything. Always suspicious that some rebellion is just on the brink. Sure, we'd be happy to show him around. The whales aren't happy? The whales aren't. Sure, sure, Flynn, is. Why didn't you get that? Ugh, not what? Next, button. Flynn moves as though to join Liu, but stays back on the anchoring pole instead. I guess some crab's going to be living large soon, he says. Maybe I sh- Tefra smiles, and beard with his hair flip, then, it has already started. I'm worried Flynn might- Sometimes people just- I take- Next, next, I take- Next, button. You don't let that show, though, and casually gesture toward the doorway. Well, shall we? You say. Liao starts climbing against guide hooks toward the door. Let's. Flynn grins. I've been look- After you three leave, Tefra puts up the anti-drifting catch over her doorway, right to sleep for her, apparently. You hook your arms around both the humans and pull them along through the crystalline passages at a slower pace than normal. The way feels narrower, more confusing than normal, and after a minute you realize that it's because of the strange shadows they're non -phosphor. So how was your first day here? Radio button. Checked. One of five. I'm glad you two have the chance to meet each other. How? I heard you might have more questions. I hope you like ship- Next, but- I hope you like shipwrecks. Next, next, button. Flynn shudders as you lead him along the main city current. I'll be honest, he says. My first day here was fairly terrible. I still feel like I'm drowning, and while my lungs have mostly given up on coughing, my throat still feels rough, like I've been yelling myself hoarse. Liao leans over to talk past you. That feeling never really fully goes away, she says. But you'll learn to ignore it, don't worry. Flynn sighs a quick oh, great as the three of you finally reach the edge of the city and swim out into the open ocean. Flynn gapes at the sudden open darkness, while Liu reflexively tightens her grip on your arm. You smile reassuringly for them both as you lead them up the anchoring chains toward the top of the rip. Liu focuses on the path of the chain from the city. I have a million questions, Flynn says. I don't care, but it's awesome. Radio button. Checked. One of four. The whales gave us the gift to keep us under an obligation. Radio button. Un I've wondered, too. We- Next. Next. Button. Flynn's legs do their best to keep pace as you swim along, but you can feel them starting to deaden. He's not used to using them this way. And even when he gets used to swimming all the time, he'll still never have your strength. He gives up and lets his legs drag behind him. Well, true or not, I think it's a fascinating story, he says. It gives me hope. I- You glide over the seafloor, lashing your tail languidly along. The pillowy volcanic rocks of the rift long ago gave a fish darts eye, and Liu starts as it enters her field of vision. Even though she enjoys the wreck, she's always hated the dark open sea that leads to it. Even still, she usually tries to put on a brave face for your benefit. Give Liu a quick, reassuring smile. Radio button. Focus on making less work for Flynn. Radio button. Uh, reassure and help them both. Radio button. Focus on making less work for Flynn. 
Focus on H. Reish. Focus on getting. Next. Button. The giant ship was a cargo ship. The break all kind. Now Flynn freezes up. Oh wow. He mumbles. That is so cool. Leah turns serious as she addresses Flynn. That trusted metal can cut you pretty bad if you're not careful, she says. We're going to have to swim through some parts of it, so focus on moving as little as possible. Okay, says Flynn. I'm curious, though, do you know how this ship ended up here? You're not quite sure, but you do have some plausible explanations. Dramatic, I suspect it was a bad storm. Radio button, checked, one of four. Practical, sometimes, when ships are too old to be scrapped, they are sunk. Radio button, unchecked, two. Teasing, probably pirates. Radio, hedging, there are many possibilities. Next, button. We never found any cargo aboard, and the ship seemed pretty old, you say. It's probable that they intentionally scuttled it. As you, Liyu supports your original hypothesis. I think the ship may have Flynn knots. I could see either way. You approach the cargo entry hatch and pause for a moment. You've only ever had to do this with Liu, never two humans at once. The logistics are different. The passageways are too tight to swim alongside them both at once, but you could have them go single file instead. The problem is that the person in the back won't get as much light from you. Or you could swim with one at a time, but that would leave the person alone waiting out in the dark. Oh, but those phosphorescent fish, maybe you could catch one. Try to catch a phosphorescent creature first. Radio button. Checked. One of four. Checked. One at a, one at a time. Take Flynn first. Radio button. Take them both and go single file. Radio button. Un next. Button. Leo swims up to the bag. Good thing, she says. Now we have a second light source. Flynn tries to voice his agreement between his coughs, eventually managing to just give a sickly thumbs up. Try to catch a phosphorescent creature first. Dimmed. Radio button. One at a time. Take Leo first. Radio. One at a time. Take Flynn first. Take them both and go single file. Radio button. Unchecked. Check. Next. Button. You lay the plan out for Liu and Flynn, there's not much room to maneuver, but if we go slow and you hold each other tight, we should be able to navigate the passageways of the wreck together. Liu, you bring up the back, and carry this back dragonfish for extra light. The three of you go slowly, pausing frequently to make sure that everyone's close and can see. The extra light that Liu's carrying helps her fill in the gaps at the back. You have to take it extra slow, navigating down this way back. The area opens out to a large, gently sloped storage room, illuminated by coral. Flynn looks at the dry area with longing, then to you, then to Liu for guidance. Tell him what to do, radio button, check, let Liu handle the explanation, radio button, unchecked, two of two. Next, next, button. Liu puts a hand on Flynn's shoulder. It'll be really awful for a minute, she says, once you get your body above water level. That's when it changes. You'll get up there in the air, and your reflexes kick in. Expel the water. You'll basically puke it out. But then you'll be able to feel air in your lungs. It won't be real breathing, but it still feels nice. Flynn doesn't seem all that excited about the prospect. I'm not sure, he says. I'm just getting used to the water. Liu sighs. I'll show you. Wait here. She lifts herself out of the water, crawls across some of the sand, then falls to the ground, coughing, gasping, spitting out water. The sounds echo against the metallic hull, amplifying her misery. Flynn backs away from the air and looks you for guidance, his eyes wide open. Encourage him to go up to the air. Radio button. Checked. One of three. Check. Let him know it's fine for him to stay below. Radio button. Just let him make his own decision. Radio button. Un Next. Button. Flynn smiles and drifts away from you. I guess I should take advantage of the small things while I can, he says. Liu lies on her back, breathing heavily, and waves Flynn to follow up. Flynn obeys, breaking the water, then pushing his body toward the surface proper. He only makes it halfway out before falling over, racking his whole body in a furious coughing fit that persists for nearly a full minute before he's able to move the rest of the way into the air pocket and sit down. Even then, he stares off into space without saying anything. From the sand in the air pocket, Lee looks at you and tosses her head. How about you? You want to come hang out with this old landlubber? It has been a long time since you've given yourself human form, since you've walked with legs. Should you indulge her? Indulge yourself? Go up to visit with Liu, radio button, checked. Go up to visit with Flynn, Ra go up. It's just what I want to do. R stay back. I just don't want to go up. Radio button. Un go up. It's just what. Go up. Stay. Next. Button. You push your torso up past the water level, then beach yourself against the sand, dropping your backpack nearby. Your senses scream at the wrongness. You cease sensing electrical currents in the water. Everything feels heavier, and the dry air starts to prick against your skin, your hair. Your body adjusts itself accordingly. Your tail warps and shrivels into human legs. The feeling of separation, of a cleave, always makes you feel like a piece of you is missing. Your skin loses its blue base color and warms up to a brownish tinge that's unsettlingly human. You wobble up to stand vertically, pushing your leg out wide as you stagger with the gangly sticks. Liu smile. Wear the clothing. Radio button. Checked. One of. I don't need clothing. Radio button. Unchecked. Two. You push your torso up past the water level. You are. Wear. I. Neck. Neck. Next. Button. You are the same person you have always been, and you do not need to change your appearance to maintain your dignity. You focus instead on maintaining your balance as you stumble up toward the drier sand and flop down against a larger dune. Every time you're forced to use your awkward legs, you wonder if that must be how Liu feels with you all the time. Flynn rolls over onto his back and turns his head to watch your gradual advancement up the beach. Mercifully, he does not comment on your coordination. Instead he says, an undersea wreck pump full of air and filled with sand all feels like such a hassle. Almost not worth it. Why not just visit an island or something? Actually, I'd like to do something like that. Radio button. We can't risk being seen. It could be dangerous. Radio button. Humans. Revealing our human zone islands. We own the sea. Radio. Reve next. Button. Revealing ourselves isn't a mistake we can undo. Next. Button. Leah narrows her eyes at you. 
They stay isolated because of the whales, she says. That's Liayu, always cutting straight to the point. Whales? Flynn says. The sperm whales, you mean? If you were being more nuanced, you'd point. We should look into changing things. Radio button. We merfolk govern ourselves. Or at least, considering what humans do, I don't think we can blame the whales. Radio. We merfolk govern ourselves. We merfolk. Cons we have a deal with the whales. Radio button. Uncheck. Next. Button. You punch a small hole in the sand. The whales insist that as long as we refuse to protect them against whalers, we have to stay hidden. As a concession, you say. But I'm tired of bowing to their demands. We should have control over our own destiny. Flynn gasps some air in surprise. I know that some countries still engage in whaling, he says, but most of us. Liao drags her own feet against the sand. I can't really blame the whales on this one, she says. I don't think, not all of, to be honest, a lot of merfolk are. I guess that's a fair reason, says Flynn. But we're allies against a greater evil. The whales can take away our immortality. They hold no sway over me. Radio button. The merfolk have always protected the innocent sea creatures. Radio. Next button. Next. Your mind flashes back to the time you faced such a horror. You hate recalling the experience. The giant squid attack button. The giant squid attack. Image. Show stats. The, the sheer number of bodies moving through the water confuses your senses, forcing you to rely on sight, which is not that great down in the sunless deep. The depth puts the sperm whales at a disadvantage. If the battle goes on too long and they don't get the opportunity to surface, they'll drown. You can see only flashes of the battle, part of a massive whale, a glimpse of a roving, a trident, radio button, checked, one of five. A dagger, radio button, some net and rope, radio, a pike, radio button, a war hammer, radio, next, button. It almost feels silly, when you look out on the scale of things. How can your pitiful trident stop the onslaught, the hive mind of giant squid working together to overwhelm the great behemoths? Your two ever wardens purposefully dart past you, there, Esther hafts his own trident. And you're too new to have been assigned a specific, focus on defending my fellow, focus on defending the whales, radio button, focus on defending my fellow merfolk. Focus on defending the whales. Focus on attacking the giant squid. Ra Next. Button. Next. I can feel my blood pumping hard, pushing me on. Radio button. Unchecked. F Next. Button. This is what you were made to do. This is why merfolk were given immortal grace, agility, and strength. You are the protectors of the sea, and you will not stand by and let cruelty and death triumph. One final thought comforts you, that killing a squid isn't killing a thinking creature. No. You have to focus on the here and now. Free her head. Free her mouth. Neck. Text field. Next. Button. Remember earlier how we told you that the first five chapters are available for free? To buy it now for eight dollars, and if you've already purchased, click here. Restore purchases. Link. Games folder. Entertainment folder. Forty-four apps. Screen recording in progress. Button. Status bar item. 